makers. I recently built a bell to put on Huey so that I could say hello to people instead of honking the horn. I saw in a video on a Volkswagen bus, thought it was really cool. The Volkswagen bus had a bell somewhere in it and they rang it whenever they were near somebody that they knew and I thought that'd be really cool. I just didn't want the bell in the cabin with me so I put it up front of the car. Problem is this tiny bell that I bought, it's loud right now but once the car is on the road, once the trunk slid's closed, once everything's there, you can't hear it. It's just more of a like that. Behold, a bigger bell. I want to make it work. So I've got some solenoids. I've got this tiny little guy right here that is a push pull. And I've got this bigger one that I pulled from an old printer. Uh, one of those copier scanner printers in an office. And this is what ran this tiny bell because it would sit like this and it would ring the little bell with the arm and it would go. Well, I'm gonna make this ring this big bell. My little solenoid goes up and down. So what I think I might do is I'm gonna put a little hinge point here and then mount the bell over here on its side and then have this because it's it's basically just a, a co-hanger. I can flexible or I can yeah I can flex it to put it where I need it. Um, so that's my general plan. This particular co-hanger is really bendable. I've bent it two or three times now, and it doesn't even act like it's losing its strength. So that's a good thing. Uh, once it's in the car, I have a button in the dash that I press and bing bing or ding ding as I would want it to do. So here we go. Let's see what I can do. There we go. Now I will put a hinge point right here, put a screw through it, hold it in place, and then whenever it boom, boom, it'll jump. It's essentially what the old one did, only I had a big loop here to shorten it. I need it longer, so I'm going to do that. I may switch out to the bigger ringer. It's got a, two holes in it, so it might be easier. Uh, this hung like this inside, and then this rope hung from it so you could grab it and ring. I don't want to run a rope through the car because then I'd have to run some sort of Bowden tube and make sure it doesn't get stuck on anything. And the car's already got 12 volts running through it. These are 12 volt solenoids. All should be good. Okay, let's see what happens. figure out the perfect little just need to know where to put this before I drill a hole there seems good Good. 
range of motion. Got my hole. Let's drill it. Usually I'd build something like this in the house, but this bell's really loud and I think everybody's tired of me ringing bells. Boy, blowing off sawdust from a sawdust or metal flakes from drilling. It's really hard. I work in a shop and I wear my mask all day because it's at work, and you can't do that. <laughs> you just gotta, <laughs> and your brain still says you can. So that's the fun part. You're like, um, about that. Okay. Probably do it this way. Through there. Oh, I need to go up a size in the screw hole. Yeah, I think it will. There we go. Bam. Okie dokie. Now. Eep. Using locking nuts so that going down the road, it does not go shaky, shaky, folly party. I think the other thing I'm going to probably end up having to do is put some sort of guide on the arm so that it only goes one direction. And no, I don't mean the group. I do not mean the group, I mean the physical direction. Come on, size. Hey, there it is. One of these little pocket things. Really quick. Just turn them all on a magnetic board and just grab one. I'm doing some heavy duty stuff, I'll get out the proper wrenches and stuff, but little things like this don't matter. I don't need a lot of torque. And I'm just making sure that the thing's tight. Oh, a little too tight. Hey! Now we're talking. will be to get it just to the point of straight. There we go. Now, what I did was I took two 9-volt batteries. Even though the thing's 12 volts, it can handle 18. I'm not throwing a bunch of amperage through it. 
soldered one end to a battery with a momentary switch, some alligator clips. The whole entire body of this frame will be the ground because once I bolt it to the car, the car battery is grounded through the car. So I hook this up here and I think my battery's running low, but this will give me a good test. And I probably spoke too soon. Yeah, I think that'll work. There's a lot of bounce there, so I might figure out how to how to stop the bouncy bouncer. Might be just as simple as doing this. Zapped myself. Let's see if this works just a little bit. Hey, there we go. Okay. Mechanism works. Boom. Okay, now the hard part mounting this bell sideways. Of course, it won't be hanging. So I'll take off this pretty brass hanger. See if it works. Sorry about the noise at home. Ha! See, that's why I'm in the garage. Because, <laughs> you know, people are, you know, not up to the ringy dingy dings. So the key is where that's holding right there, which is where I'm going to have to put the bell because you don't want it to hold against it. It's about four and three quarters inches or 120 millimeters. Okay. So that's my key. This will actually be more like that. If I ring the inside or the outside, it doesn't matter. Bells work both ways. So, I don't know, could I do that? See, this is the cool part. Now, I can test this part. <clears throat> Looks like a little fist. Boom, boom. works pretty well and it'll give me a better anchor point it's very tall though I don't have much room in the car so I probably will go this way okay oh. unclipped my little So now I just need to make an arm that holds it here. And I'll make the arm flexible so that I can do the adjustments. I think we're good so far. I decided to move to the bigger shop where I work because they have metalworking tools. The plan is to make a bracket so that this is ever so slightly off the ground. Um, and that bracket will be like this and then it'll be bent down and back so it holds all together thought about maybe doing it this way i guess i could do it this way too because the idea is that this part will mount to the car so i guess i could do that actually that might work really well because then I just need to put a
bolt over to that. I don't think that's the traditional quarter 20, but it's probably plausible to make it fit. Grabbed a quarter 20 bolt. Fun fact, quarter 20 is the same mount as all camera mounts. So if you ever want to put a build a mount for a camera, that little nut in the bottom is always quarter 20. So that works perfectly. A couple of washers, that's good. So maybe I will take this piece off. Actually that holds that, so I might just add this to the back. Like so. If it's ever so slightly off the ground, I can find that magic angle and just put a bolt, like an arm that goes through that and then tighten it. And then this will mount to the car, probably on the side of the front. And then voila. I've only been holding it like this because it's easier, but the bolt can hold it any way it wants. I'm gonna go look to see how long a bolt I got. I found this quarter 20. It sticks out pretty darn far. Let's see if it works. Perfect. My drawback is this quarter 20 doesn't have threads that go all the way down. So I can either find one that has threads all the way going down, which I don't think I have, or I could simply just put this and a threader and make the thread go all the way down. That way I can bolt it to this piece right there and then put two bolts there. Not bolts, sorry. I can put a nut there and a nut there and a nut there to hold it in place and then the locking nuts that to hold that. Because I just don't want it shaking loose while it's riding around in the car. But I think that'll work. So I'm going to go thread this and I'll be right back. And there we have it. Threaded it all the way to the bottom. Now I'm just going to figure out where this is going to be and how I'm going to fasten this to this. I guess I could weld it, but honestly, I think nuts and bolts would probably be the better way. The way I can adjust if I had to. I also bent this corner over in the original version in order to make sure I didn't stab myself on it. I'm going to have to cut that off in order to make this really, really level. So first, I got to figure out where that's going to be. Compared to that. Yeah. Cut that off real quick. And poof. a lot of Futurama, so BAM! The nice thing is this is all bendable, so I can make the clanger bell, clanger, clang, big ball of brass, I don't know what to call it. Put in the comments what, you, what it's actually called. Anyway, so this can be bent to form where this goes, but I want it to be maximum usage. And I believe I do this. Right about there is the maximum usage. So my key to being marker. Height-wise, it's basically
Yeah, I'm just eyeballing it all. Right about there. This is going to be an idea of where I need to start putting stuff because I can always make this adjustable this way. So I can make it raise or lower before I mount it. But this gives me an idea like that's the maximum. If, if this piece is sitting on the ground right there and at that angle, that's where I need to drill. So I'm going to put a quarter inch hole here and then see if I can mount it. Ta I'll make the long spin. Well, I'm well past my threaded part that I made, so looks like I must have done a good job. This little bolt here got really hot, of course. Oh, no. No. Ah. Oh, there we go. Yep, it's stuck. There must be a knot there. Elbow grease. Ugh. Yep, there we go. Snaggled. No, 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 no. There we go. I'll switch out with some locking nuts where I think fit. Bam! Okay. Now, let's see how this works. Does it fit? Is it clear? clear. I'll take it. I'll accept that as a win. Why are you not going on right Of all the nuts that I put on there, now you want to snag. What the heck? Oh, I'm gonna need some washers, it looks like. For now, let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Touching the ground. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so I gotta cut this part off. I don't need the height. So I will cut it right about there. Bam. Then I gotta figure out how to fasten this to this without welding it because I want to be able to adjust it if I ever have to, and by adjust I mean drill holes. But so far, see what it was going down the road, it'll be bam. Okay. I will definitely have to make something to make sure this does not move. Because this wants to move. This wants to move, so I might put a little. Hmm. Pin it, maybe? I don't know. I could put a little piece of metal underneath. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll put a little piece of metal underneath so it can't spin. But first, let's mount this puppy. Oops. 
Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. This can go in this one, and this one goes in there, and that one is just a tiny bit too small. Now it's not. Is it like a magic? Do you ever think Alan, the inventor of the Allen wrench, gets paid every time somebody makes them? And is it Mr. Allen or is Alan his first name and he just went with it? Like his last name was something really weird. Like prefer the bird bird or something weird like that. <laughs> and he decided that we didn't want to have defer to bird bird wrenches. So we're gonna go with well, that's weird. The nut I took over there fits it, but not the one I grabbed. Ha! Next. Yeah, so Mr. Gefferdeverdever, who invented the Allen wrenches, Allen Gefferdeverdever, is no relation to the Swedish chef. Because, you know, Gefferdeverdeverdever, Gebar, Gebar, Gebar. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Let me grab a washer. I had this fun little idea while I was over there. Washer. And then a little ring gasket, a rubber gasket, that'll pinch it. And then O ring gasket. Be enough. I might have to bend this a little, which is no problems. Okay. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Oh, there we go. That ain't going nowhere. I'm going to bend it out just a smidge. It wants to rub up against right there, so. Okay, test. Yep. Ground came off. Ha ha, funny. So this is grounded here. But for now, I have it disconnected so I can make a better... Bet my battery's running off. Guess I could give it a 12 volt power supply.
Bingo. We have an ever so slight problem with the height of this. So there, let's try that. Bingo. Much louder than the other one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off, sand that bottom down just a smidge so it can sit flat. And then when I get it in the car, I can adjust this because it always moves around. And then this runs to the button in my dash. This mounts to there, which I'll hook up real quick with this little screw. And then I will be all good to go. Leveled off. I just ground that down so it's leveled that so that it can sit. I will mount it this on the wall. The bell doesn't seem to be moving. So I think the little rubber gaskets are working. I also bent this just a little bit. And the thinner metal will let me uh, adjust the arm and that. So that should do the trick. I've got some metal screws that will go in the back. And I think we are good to go. Now it's time to mount it in the car after I clean up my mess. And now we have it. I did a quick test. I put this block of wood here because it'll be mounted flat against this. So the block of wood there. I closed the, the front lid and it worked. So back here I have a little hidden red wire this guy goes to there, so I will wire that up, and then the screws go there and there, and that will hold it in place. I will have to drill those screws, so let's get rid of the spare tire. That way it's not my way to drill holes. I have the two old screws here. I'm just going to have to move over. I may even build a little box around it. Maybe a quick little sheet metal box. I like how this wedges up against there. That way it'll give me something to go by. But I think I'll drill a hole here. Where there was the old one. And then that one no longer lines up. So I'll probably drill another one right there. So I guess at this point, everybody's probably asking, why am I putting a big brass bell in a 1967 Volkswagen Squareback. I already have a horn. Um, it's to say hello to people. Lots of people wave at me whenever I'm driving this car. They put up the peace sign. They put up the thumbs up. They like the car. It's kind of one of those fun little things that people have. But I look at it this way. If I can say hi, it makes them happy. A horn would be, you know, a little bit rude. But I also look at it this way in a bigger picture. One of my favorite quotes is George Bernard Shaw. You see things and say why, but I dream of things that never were and say why not. So, I also personally like to say, if it's not ridiculous, then why build it? That ain't going nowhere. And there we have it. I put two screws in and it ain't going nowhere. It might jiggle a little, but that's okay. Okay, so this is my button power. So this actually runs to the power to the radio, my accessory line. And so I am going to make it only run when the car's on. I may change that later, but with these old cars, the, the chances of it draining the battery are a lot more than new cars so for now it just turns on when the car's on so first i'm going to get some 
heat shrink around this. Like so. And then I'm gonna do dish. And I'm just gonna fan this out. I'm not even gonna. This does not have to be a spectacular control of wiring. I'm just gonna bend this down, slide this up, cover it. And voila! The ground on this solenoid goes to the body of the bell ringer. And then the body of the bell ringer is screwed to this, which is the ground for everything in the car. So this is your 12 volt power supply. This is the ground. All should be good. Okay. Huey's a little bit louder car because it's old, but you know, he's got personality. So I'll stand next to the microphone. The bell's all hooked up. I did a quick tweak on the arm. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh yeah! See what it sounds like closed. Oh yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Ding ding out loud. I could not miss that sound. Yeah! Get you down there and see what it looks like. My son's ready to push the bell. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can definitely hear that. Yeah. Do 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 do. So there you have it. Huey got a bigger bell. Now I can say hello to people just as easy as I wanted to. And I really like the way it turned out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell, ding ding, to make sure you know whenever my next videos come out. I've already got one in the works right now, this time with robots. So see you next time and keep on making.